This is the second of a series of podcasts dealing with follow-up of melanocytic lesions with digital dermatoscopy. In the first part, we concentrated on changing melanomas and on the criteria that we see in changing melanomas, and now we will concentrate on changing melanocytic nevi. Of course, also nevi change, and this is a typical example of a growing nevus that you will see in children and young adults. You can see that there is an increase in size, a symmetric increase in size, but you can also see the typical pattern of a growing nevus with a peripheral rim of brown dots and in the center there is a reticular pattern. Of course there are also growing nevi that do not show this pattern. For example this nevus here has only a reticular pattern, there are no dots or clots at the periphery, but what you can see there is a steady increase in size over time. But unlike in melanoma, there are no melanoma-specific criteria that appear over time, no change in pattern, no uh, new color or no new structure. And there is one type of change that we usually see in older patients, which is involution. By involution, I mean that the pigmentation of the nevus slowly disappears. As you can see here, there's a nevus with a reticular pattern, and at the beginning there is a light to dark brown pigmentation and here you can see after two years the pigmentation decreased. This is different from regression. Regression is an active process that usually results in a structureless white area in dermatoscopy and usually also in gray or gray dots or clots which correspond to melanophages in the dermis. Involution is not an active process. Regression is an active process driven by an immunologic response. Now what about melanoma arising in a pre-existing nevus? As I already have told you in the first uh, broadcast of this series, these patients with multiple nevi have an increased risk to develop melanoma, but usually when a melanoma develops, it usually appears de novo and not in a pre-existing nevus. Here is an example. You can see a melanoma in situ developing in a pre-existing nevus. The dark reticular pattern in the center of this lesion is changing, although the other part of the lesion, which corresponds to the congenital nevus, is not changing at all. Now the question is, can we predict the chance of malignant transformation of a nevus by morphology or in other words, are dysplastic or atypical nevi more likely to transform into a melanoma than so-called common nevi? Now let's look at an example. This is a melanoma that developed in a pre-existing nevus. And in the next slide, I will show you five nevi of the same patient. And you tell me which one is the pre-existing nevus of this melanoma. Is it lesion? Is it this lesion, or is it this lesion, or is it this lesion, or this lesion, or this lesion? And I'm sure you now already picked a lesion, but you have to ask yourself, why did you pick this specific lesion? And the answer is, you probably did not answer the question, which one is most likely to develop into a melanoma because you cannot answer this question. You pick the lesion based on the question which one is the most ugly or the most atypical looking. But this is not the same question. Now you will see that the melanoma developed in this nevus, which is not the most ugly. It is not the most atypical and it is not the most dysplastic. And this is why I think that the concept of the dysplastic nevus in melanocytic dysplasia and melanocytic proliferations is misleading because the most ugly nevus might not be the one that develops into melanoma. Now there is another critical question with regard to digital monitoring. Which lesions should be selected? Of course these patients have multiple lesions and it's difficult to select the lesion for excision but also for monitoring. You cannot monitor all the lesions. Well, fundamentally there are two approaches. 
short-term monitoring of single lesions, usually any change will result in excision, and long-term monitoring of multiple lesions, where only significant changes result in excision. With short-term monitoring of single lesions, you usually choose a, a suspicious lesion, a flat lesion, usually with reticular pattern, but eccentric hyperpigmentation or a history of change. With long-term monitoring, you choose you select multiple lesions, also completely inconspicuous lesions. These two strategies choose different lesions from a morphologic spectrum. Obvious melanoma, of course, are not selected in both strategies. Non-obvious lesions or suspicious lesions are selected in short for short-term monitoring, usually single lesion only, and obvious nevi, obvious lesions that are benign, are selected for long-term monitoring. Now, there are several questions related to monitoring. How many lesions do we need to monitor to detect one melanoma? How many changing lesions do we need to excise to detect one melanoma? And the most important question, did we decrease the number of excisions necessary to detect one melanoma? In this figure you see on the horizontal axis, in chronologic sequence, the most important studies dealing with follow-up of patients with digital dermatoscopy. And on the other axis, you can see the number of lesions monitored by patient. And you can see here that in Australia, as evidenced by the study of Mansis and Altamura, the number of lesions monitored by patient is low. Why? Because Mansis and Altamura preferred short-term monitoring, and short-term monitoring is dedicated to single lesions. Also, Agenziano in Italy has a low number of lesions monitored by patient. Now, what about the numbers needed to monitor to detect one melanoma? You can see here that the number of lesions needed to monitor to detect one melanoma is low in those studies that monitored only a small number of lesions per patient. Or in other words, short-term monitoring is more effective than long-term monitoring. Well, let's view it the other way. Robinson in the US and Fuller in the US monitored a large number of lesions per patient. Robinson monitored even more than 30 lesions per patient. Now let's look how efficient this was. You can see also in this study, Robinson and Fuller, that they needed to monitor a lot of lesions to detect one melanoma. Or in other words, long-term monitoring is not as efficient as short-term monitoring. Why? Because here you see a spectrum of nevi, and these nevi come from the same patient. And you would choose only a single lesion, the most atypical one for short-term monitoring, but you will probably choose all four lesions for long-term monitoring. Or in other words, if you select a lesion for short-term monitoring, the chance that you select a melanoma is higher because you select more atypical lesions. The chance is higher that the selected lesion is a melanoma, and it is, does not mean that the chances are higher that the selected lesion will develop into a melanoma. Now, what about the proportions of, ex of excised lesions relative to monitored? You can also see that there is a higher proportion of excisions in short-term monitoring, as evidenced by the studies of Mansus and Altamora. Now, to sum this up. Short-term monitoring of single lesions, it's more effective, but also more dangerous because more likely that at the first visit of the patient you select a melanoma. But for short-term monitoring, you have an alternative. You could excise the lesion at the first visit. Well, long-term monitoring of mul multiple lesions is less effective, less dangerous, because it's less likely that you select a melanoma. But you do not have an alternative at the first visit. You cannot excise them all. Now, what about the last question? Did we really decrease the number of excisions? Now, I can only show you data from my clinic, and you can see here that the number of excised nevi per excised melanoma, or the benign to malignant ratio, decreased over time. We started with a ratio of 7 to 1 in 1998, and decreased the ratio to 4 to 1 in 2008, or in other words, we had to excise seven lesions to detect one melanoma in 1998, and now we excise only four lesions to detect one melanoma in 2008.
Does this also mean we detect melanoma earlier? You can see here the proportions of inside the melanomas that were detected during monitoring. And you can see here that the majority of studies had at least 50% of melanomas that were in situ or very early. So we are more efficient and also detect melanomas earlier with digital monitoring. But of course this evidence is indirect evidence. There is no randomized prospective study that really shows that monitoring is efficient and effective.